So we'll do that during class time, you know. Uh, but I also want to assign you some, some drawings uh, that are not gonna be an, so much in depth anatomically, something like this, you know. Uh, But this way, if I, if I complete this with the full shading, I can have this as a reference for you to, to keep uh, making more complete drawings. It's, I think it's really important to do completed drawings, you know, stuff like this with, uh, where you also have to acknowledge the values to the background because that plays a big part in how you're gonna render the values within the, within the figure. And to straighten up the camera here. I wanna, I think we, we should all thank John here. He brought a, he lent me a, a very nice stand. Let me show you. Oops. I'm wearing my cap backwards. So See, this is a, he lent me this very nice uh, stand. It's not, it's not so much in the way as the, as the other one. Uh, so it's very, very practical. So thank you, John. I think we should all thank John for, for letting us borrow this, uh, this uh, camera uh, tripod, I think. It's not a tripod, I guess more like a stand. Um, let me go back to the... And so because I'm, we're gonna do a lot of shading, I've gone ahead and, and gotten my pencils ready. So this is how all your pencils should look. You should have, uh, I've got, I've got seven pencils ready to go. So let's, let's get ready here for the, for the shading. And first, uh, before we, we go and start working on the, on the model, uh, I did this little drawing up here. And in, uh, in regards to shading and shading the model, uh, you always wanna be aware of the direction of, of the light source. That's what I'm, I like, I always enjoy doing this little three dimensional arrows here. So that's the direction of, of the light source, right? And, you know, just to contrast it with this, see, of course, this is a, a drawing so that you can understand light and shadow. So that's a good part in light, a good part of the light mass, good part of the shadow mass. But of course, the light is never going to be in the same place. You know, if you have a living model or if, even if we're, you know, copying a, a drawing like in this case. So what I did here is to try and figure out, you know, before I started to see where the light source was coming from. And even though you look at the original, it has a lot of shading, but uh, most of the figure is, uh, is within the, uh, most of the figure is predominantly in the light. You, you see a little bit of shadow on the left leg. There's a little bit of a cast shadow there. And it's the shadow being cast from the upper, from the pelvis and the torso. Uh, but overall, the shadow mass for this drawing would be on the other side in his back. And that's what 
there's a little bit of a turning right along the edges. And that, I think that that's why the, this is such a nice drawing to work from because most of it is modeled within the values that make up the, the light mass. So it's very subtle uh, shading in most of this drawing. And that's, that's what, I've, what I've done over here with this uh, sphere. See, I, I indicated just a little bit of, of the, of the light mass. Maybe I, I made it, I made it too wide. Let me just push it back a little bit more. So the, we see a lot of the, a lot of the turning, which is the darkest value that I, you will be using. And that's, uh, despite the figure being against a dark background, there's almost, you know, there's almost an outline on the, on the figure's uh, contour, on the figure's you know, edges that makes it stand out from, uh, from the background. You know, let me go back here. I mean, the, the sh let me see if I put my, it focuses on here. Well, uh, you see this, this is mostly turning, this all the turning and it, it separates it from, from the background. And I, I've kind of started doing that here. You know, I mapped out the, the shadows, uh, you know, describe the shadow shapes. And that's gonna help us, the turning, they're gonna help us separate it from the background. In, in some areas, it, you lose the form, you lose that turning, you, li you lose the outline becomes part of the background, you know, like, like up here. Uh, so kind of gives you that, you know, that uh, lost and found edge that I always find so interesting. So I'm going to, I'm going to pick up the paper. I'm going to pick up the paper and uh, You know, the, the nicest part to this figure, of course, is, is the torso. It's such a nice torso with, uh, the model was very well-defined uh, in, his, in his muscles. So the easel is giving me a hard time. Let me just move it over. Oh, what the hell is this? Where are the blue ones? Miguel, mute your mic. Yeah, I, he's muted already. He's got to make an entrance. Now I'm wrestling with the easel here. There And I, I was mentioning, you know, the, the, the nice part to this, uh, you know, to this drawing is the torso. And that's what I want to get to. And now I, I try and be disciplined about my shading and I, 
and it, when I draw and when I paint, and I try and leave the areas that are that are the most interesting. I would try and leave those for last uh, because that that forces me to speed up on the other areas that that are not as uh, interesting to me. Uh, so put this one. I've got the original here also that I want to. I want to use as a as a reference. And I'm going to start at the feet. Uh, and on the the left leg, because I think that's what's farthest uh, from uh, from the viewer. Let me go up here a little bit more here. So you might have, you, you know, I'm sure you notice that I put these, uh, these lines here, uh, I'm gonna make them just a little darker. And these lines, indicate the plane break. What's the plane break? Well, this right here, see this line? It's breaking this plane from that plane. And you will notice, that, or when we get to the, to do the, the anatomy, uh, you will notice that these plane breaks follow the, uh, the underlying structure of the muscles. And this, this is a great drawing with uh, a very detailed anatomical uh, model that he used for this drawing. And see that the, the forms that are described by the planes that I just did here it's the uh, the muscles of the leg. The this one here. This is called the vastus lateralis, the vastus medialis, and the and this one, the rectus femoris. Arneal gland. And so that's what I'm uh, outlining there, and then I'm, I'm going to do them also on. Uh, on this leg here. In this case, this one is the, uh, this is called the sartorius, what is fl flowing right here. And then this is the vastus medialis, and again, this is it, same muscle as this one, the rectus femoris. So you, you want to outline, like I'm doing, And like I mentioned, I I did the I did this before class. Uh, see, like there, I as I, I had noticed this, but as I'm working on this, I noticed that I made this. This is too big compared to the to the drawing, so I might have to you know shave it down. Uh, and of course, these are the these two these right here are. It's the bottom of the uh, the femur. Then you have the the kneecap, 
and this is the top of the tibia. And here is the border between the soleus and the gastrocnemius. So I'm just throwing these terms because we're, we're going to start to deal with those more in depth next week. And see on, on this side, again, you have the soleus and gastrocnemius here. And there's this, this whole area is the tibia. This is just the skin next to the, next to the bone. Move it down a little bit here. And see how I've, I've done the foot, you know, I, I spent a good amount of time here breaking it up into simple shapes. See, it's, it has no toes or toenails, just big shapes. That's the, the inner ankle there. And of course, on, unfortunately on, on the drawing, it cuts off right there and the, it cuts off the toes. And see in, in painting and drawing the, the foot, the toes, are on a different plane than the body of, of the foot here. In painting, you will see that the toes are always a different value from, from the rest of the foot because it changes direction. See, there's like, there's that plane break. So this is always more light facing and it, it changes the, the value. And we see that to some extent here as well. Let me shut down my email here because it's anytime I get an email it makes a very loud sound. And also I want to I want to start on this leg because it is mostly the, the value range. It is very much like the, like the cast drawings. It stays within the dark lights, just barely coming out of the, out of the shadow mass. Uh, and we can also go in here a little bit into the, the shadow mass of just describing the vast of medialis. Now I've, I've made these darker than I would than I would usually do them if I was just making a drawing for myself. This is so you guys can see it more clearly. Uh, so. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see how it works out with this. This is a 2B pencil. Uh, because the drawing ended up being so small, I find it hard to control the, the ebony. The ebony pencil is a lot, it's a lot softer. 
so, and I don't, but this might give me a hard time in regards to building up the value. Uh, but I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm just gonna try it out, see how it works. And of course, I've, I've done the planes, you know, that describe the, the anatomy of the leg here. Uh, but also, you know, keep in mind this, this is why I did this rectangular prism here. These are the basic planes to the leg, uh, especially the, the upper leg, you know. Uh, so when, when I, I'm gonna first shade according to this, you know, I'm gonna do this. And then I'll do this to emphasize that structure. Those are those are going to be my the, the way that I'm going to lay down the the value. Uh, the bottom the bottom leg is uh, the tibia and the fibula. They make uh, if you do a cross section, it's like a triangle. My other question: If you were to, you know, cut through it. It has this kind of shape, and uh, we, you know, we see a little bit of that. And you can say that it kind of tapers down. So let me clean this up here. See, this is this just so that it helps you in uh, laying down. the general shading. And if we go back over here, you see this is lighter, but then gets darker along the edge because it is that other plane, the triangular shape. So when you shade this, you're gonna do this. The first general shading will be like that. I'm exaggerating the, the, so that you guys can see it more clearly. And then this. So now, now I will start, after all that, I'll start shading. See, I'm, I met that out, that value.
this is you know to acknowledge the actual three-dimensional shape. I'll go back and, and define the details uh, better in a in a more descriptive way in the, as the drawing progresses. And then if, if you, you look at you look at your your drawing, the original drawing, you will see that there's a there's a value here. And then of course also on the, the bottom of the foot here. So first we'll make it very blocky and we have time. I want to. I want to round it off. It could look more more organic. And you see the same thing happen on, on this other leg. See, you've got that value there. You've got the highlight. So like one plane and then two planes. Just like I described over here, of course, you know, it'll be facing the, the opposite way. Uh, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay down the general values first, you know, describing, that shape. I'll go back and erase the highlight here. But I'm building up the shape. And then and even though I, I thought I had made the background very dark. Here, you know, pretty quickly here, I'm realizing that I'm gonna have to go back and darken the background. See, I'm, the stroke is to define this plane and then this. And it, it's very light at this point, I'm gonna do the shadow. There on the ankle along this, along this plane. And there seems to be an area of highlight here. So I'm gonna push this. I'm gonna continue with that general shading following the simple block, simple shape of the, uh, of the legs. So now uh, I'm gonna do like, like what I showed you here. Because this is mostly in, this, in the shadow, okay, do this.
And then, you know, this plane is mostly covered by the, by the cast shadow of the pelvis. But I'm still gonna lay down the strokes. You know, working general you know, general to specific. And you know, this is the the uh, an overall light value that I'm giving it. This is this you know this is the the dark lights to a certain extent. Uh, and so I'm going to do the same thing here. Strokes to describe the you know the flat plane of the inner leg here, and uh, and then this I'm gonna go in this direction. And I'm going over the, the lightest areas. And remember, I, I can always go back here with the eraser and pick up those, those highlights. But now, right now, I'm just concerned with making it look blocky and addressing those, those general planes. So let me take a look from a distance. Let me let in Amy and uh, I forgot to invite Leo. And I'm gonna progress to work uh, you know, on the torso and, and the arms, but, you know, sticking with this, you know, general, uh, basic uh, planes. You know, I'm at the rectangular prism stage of this. I definitely want to make this darker. To differentiate it. From the top lane. Raise the camera a little bit more because we're getting we're getting to the torso, and I before class started I think I was doing this here, uh, you know, to demonstrate also you know the the uh, the volume to the rib cage. This is this other one symbolizes the pelvis. And if you look at the, at the original drawing, you see this value here. See here, from here on it gets darker because that's, that's where the pelvis, you know, changes the direction 
and there's other muscles that connect other muscles that make other forms that connect the pelvis to the rib cage. So that's why this is darker. And so I can do it like this, or I can also go sideways, but you know, contrasting it. And also I'm gonna look here, like I've got this strokes this way on the leg, and then I've got this side, I've got this. So like how can I differentiate the stroke so that it kind of helps me helps me build up the form? So because I already have this and this, maybe I'll do let's do this here. But I mean, I, I, it's, it's drawing, it's not science where you can only have one empirical truth here. It also works if I do it like this and combine both. And uh, <clears throat> I might've exaggerated here the tilt of the of the block that makes the rib cage. Let me try and correct it. Because you know this helps it helps me understand what's happening, but it's you know organic forms are a lot more a lot more complicated than a simple block here. And I'm gonna I'm gonna try and make it in a way that it's you can understand it better here. Uh, our backs are, are wider, you know, than our, in regards to our torso, the back is wider than the front. So the basic uh, shape here, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try and address that, that width. Now, keep in mind this is not the this is not the the arch of the rib cage. This is the bottom of this block here. And so this is this is more like this is more descriptive of what's of what the torso looks like in regards to this drawing, right? So, you know, the light is hitting the actual arch of the, of the rib cage would be, you know, somewhere up here. But this has given me the, the bottom of the of the rib cage. That's just so you know what where the actual arch would be. But I don't want to throw too much information out there. And I would do this for shading it. This. to bring out the front plane of the, of the torso. And because of the definition of this model, this drawing, you see that very clearly, you know, this. And of course we can't see the bottom of the, of this because the bottom of the, of the rib cage, because there's muscles covering, you know, covering the, uh, the bottom of it. But nevertheless, this let me make this darker here. See, I'm I'm giving you all the answers 
in regards to shading a human figure. I'm giving you all I got here, all, all you ever wanted to know and more. Uh, so we don't, we don't see <clears throat> the bottom of the rib cage, like I said, because you've got the rectus abdominal, you've got the external oblique, uh, but it affects, if you look, it affects, you know, you can see here on top of the, the belly button, that pretty much describes this. And in a drawing, uh, you always want to, in a, in a figure drawing, you want to separate that. Look at the strokes that I'm doing here. I'm not. I'm not going in there and trying to shade all those little muscles. You know, I'm not doing this. Look at. Just separating it. And I'm going to do this here, you know, this on either side. Can you see that? How nicely that brings out this portion. Let me pull back here the camera so I can see very, very light shade, you know, shading, but it's giving me the structure that I'm that I'm looking for. And I think like on the on this on the drawing, the the light, it seems to me the light is hitting very, very strongly the pretty much this area here, like the bottom of the sternum and the arch of the of the rib cage. So from here it gets it gets darker. Uh, and so what would happen is like, you know, like I I made this, right? You know, I'm, I'm making it, I'm making the planes flat, but of course, any everything on the body is also convex, it's rounded. And so I can, darken up here to push this this area which is up here uh, at the at the neck to push that back
So despite the temptation to jump in here and start to do all those nice little muscles there, I'm just, you know, big areas, big areas of, of valley with, with long strokes. And, uh, you know, we've gone over the planes of the face. Pick up this a little bit more. And uh, we <clears throat> let me go back over these. I forgot, totally forgot. I got I got into the shading, and I forgot to do the, to describe the, the planes here. But I can, I can go back and do that. I, I, I think it was better actually that I just ended up doing the general uh, planes. Uh, but here, you know, this line to separate The, the planes of the bicep and triceps. And then also up here, and this separates the extensors from the flexors. So this. That actually catches more light. Then the top, you know, this top is, is darker. So I went this way and I can shade according to this. And as long as I'm shading lightly, I can go back and pick up those highlights so I can And now this part is almost, uh, it's very hard to decipher. I'm just gonna give it some sh shading along this direction. Sir, I have a question on the anatomy. Okay, how might, how might, how may I answer? Ask. There's this uh, like diamond shaped indentation on his chest, What what is that part? That is the bottom of the sternum. Okay, that's what I thought. I was just making sure. Yeah, there's like I've, I've mentioned this before. There's there's parts of the anatomy where the skin is right against bone, and uh, no matter how much weight somebody puts on, you mm -hmm. can feel the the the. Uh, the sternum, I mean, it's, you can just tap your, your chest, you know, between mm -hmm. your pectoralis major, and, you know, you, you feel the bone, even if, if you're a hundred pounds or if you're 300 pounds, it's, it's always going to be there. It's one of those points where if it wasn't for those points, the skin would just kind of hang like a bubble, you know, mm -hmm. that is a, a point of attachment. Mm -hmm. And, uh, So yeah, that's that's what that is. That's the but yeah, we'll we'll get to that. Uh, and then I'm going to I'm gonna go up here on, on the hand here because I see very clearly this plane. Also, the hands are usually of a darker value than our upper arm because 
our or does anybody know why why our hands are darker value than our upper arm nobody wants to guess Is it the way the light hits the upper arm? The what? Is it the way that the light hits against the upper arm that makes it look lighter? Well, or is it because like it's the light's bouncing off the floor and it hits the lower body? I mean, those those are correct in, in a way, but uh, the 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 main reason that like like in also like in this guy and like in in ourselves like if you. If you look at your bare arm, you will see that your hand is darker than your upper arm, uh, regardless of where the light is coming from. It's because our hands get more sunlight. You know, like our hands and like our forearms are usually more exposed, and this is always very, very clear in in balance. Like yeah. And here also. I've mapped out the planes. These go with the flexors and extensors of the arm. And I'm going to I'm going to say that this this goes in this direction. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of value here to describe the plane going in the opposite direction. So at this point, he should look very blocky, simplified values. See? Uh, Let me go back, <clears throat> let me go a little bit here to this. So is this reference in the PDF that you had sent us or this is from somewhere else? Which one, what reference? Like the one that we're using right now, is that in the PDF or is that from another, another story? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he's there, he's on that PDF. Oh, okay. There, it's all those Russian academic drawings from the, it's a, I think it's a Chinese book. What page is it? This thing, I don't, this have one. But I'm gonna check. 11. Yes, okay. page 11. And also, we can add some, we did plenty of values of the face. See, like, there's a lot, there's a lot of nice details on the, on the face over here, right? Like the, the eyelid and all those things, but I'm just gonna, Push that back according to the planes. The face is actually pretty dark. And see the the neck and the beard, they kind of blend in with the background. When I was looking at this earlier, uh, I felt that the body was too wide. 
But once I went in there and started to describe the planes, and then right now when I start adding shading, when it doesn't contrast as much with a dark background, it kind of falls into place. It just I always find it interesting how any if you make a shape, it looks might look you might look out of proportion, but once you start to draw into that shape, you know, dividing its its planes, dealing it with dealing with value, like it cuts it up and it makes it look smaller. So this shading was just to emphasize the emphasize the planes. Now, uh, I'm going to, I'm adding the turning. I think that's, and then the area right next to that is the, uh, the dark lights. And that's what we're gonna start to deal with. So that's what's, I'm gonna go again to the, to the feet. And so I'll, I'll try and emphasize uh, both of those values, the, the turning, because I'm here it gets a little hard to decipher on the drawing what is uh, what is the turning and what is the, uh, the dark light. I'm going in here on the foot. It's the arch here that creates this shadow. Which might be the turning and also on the heel here. Move this over here. Can you see that? Let me lower this a little bit more. There's you know what I'm doing, what I'm looking at. See, there's this darker value. It's almost like uh, the shading follows like when you're wearing sandals, you know. Like you're the shading is like you're putting sandals on, on the feet here. And 
and see over all this, this is in shadow. Or oh, it's very dimly lit. Trying to push the uh, these toes back and bring out the, the big toe. And I, as I, now that I've shaded it, I realize I need to darken I'm using the ebony pencil. I need to darken this part where the foot is resting. See, this might be like I said, turning or the dark light. Is this, when I'm when I'm shading, sometimes I'm doing this or this, and sometimes scribbles. If I see a hard edge, I do this or this. If I see a soft edge, I do this. And see along here, this is that turning that makes it stand out from the from the background. Start getting the background you have to make the make the foot stand out more. You probably can can't see it here that for the camera it's pretty dark here behind the foot somewhere out And still, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not dealing with the toes. Oh, dark in the background here.
for my <clears throat> looking for my brush. Smooth it out. And see on on this side the contour is slightly darker because of that turning but on this side it's the the background that is that is darker and that's what I'm having a hard time describing But again, you know, minimal, minimal detail. You can see this part is the, uh, the Achilles tendon. And that brings out the uh, the inner ankle there. So this is this is tibia. And I've got this, I've got this plane mapped out, so I'm going to shade in here.
This is Vastas Medialis. And here it becomes a dark accent. Let me pull this up a little bit here. See, this area, is, it cuts into, or it's a division between the, these two muscles. And I'm following this mapped out plane here. Darken this plane here along the the outer edge created by the fastest lateralis. See if that value there has merged with the background. So we'll have to go back and pull up the See, this is where it's merged.
I'm gonna go in here. So it's it's very at this point it's still very blocky, very very angular. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna use my my brush here, smooth it out. Let me pull this back. And I think I can go in here with the uh, with the eraser. And I can bring out some some highlights here. That highlight. This is a part of the of the uh, of the femur that extends out of the pelvis. This is it's called the it's called the the, uh, the greater trochanter. It's a point of attachment for a lot of the muscles of the leg. And so very lightly picking up those those highlights. Very delicately picking up those highlights.
See this, this right here, it's the uh, sartoria of the muscle. It attaches also to the top of the tibia. It's kind of like a, like a belt. Soften it up a little bit here. It needs more work. Like I can, I can keep shading the upper leg, but I, I just want to push this, the lower leg, more into the shadow, and I'll move on. I think up from there, I'll jump up to the torso. Right? The more I, sh the more I shade it, the more things that I see that I need to bring out. And so I'm like, if I keep working at this pace, I'm not gonna finish. I'm not gonna. At this, point, I just realized that like there's so much detail. I'm enjoying it very much, but I'm like, I want to, I think if I do one leg and the torso and maybe one arm, I think that as the class progresses, I'm like, I got to narrow down my, my goals. There's uh, there's veins that I I would bring out with uh, with a eraser, but I'm I'm not gonna deal with those right now. And this looks, this muscle is called the tibialis anterior. And it looks too bright. I'm going to push it back. But yeah, this, this is what it's about here. Like I'm, 
I'm thinking. Maybe I just keep shading until 12 o'clock midnight. It'll be a six hour tutorial. No, eight hours. See this? That's the TB Alice interior. So this is pretty round. And then this is kind of, this is flat here. See, I've got a dark in. the area here behind the leg, so we can we can bring it out here. It's starting to blend with the with the background. Sir, is it okay for us to use ebony for the background? Yeah, you can use the ebony. That's what I've, I've resorted to. to okay. I had intended to stay with the other one, with a 2B, but it was... That's it was, way too light. Yeah. It takes too but, long to build But it. ebony only for the background or for the figure also? I've started to go in, into the figure like this area is here. The darker, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and see, sometimes it might be the paper or the the backing here. You get these like this buildup of uh, graphite. Go back, back in there and 
You know, pick them up. So I think that's I think that's good right now for the leg. I want to move up to the arm. One arm and then the torso. So I'm going to do the one that is covering up the face. I'm going to give my, my pencils a, a sharpening. So I'm gonna, I'm going to go in here and uh, to the shadow and find the turning here. And it's very sharp here along the, I spent a, a good amount of time trying to describe these shapes 
as accurate as I could do it. And you see, this is part of it is the humorous. These two portions is, is the humorous, and this middle one is the ulna, which is the hard part of the elbow. And see that that value that brings out the brings out the elbow. See, I always like how that how that value works. It just gives it more roundness and separates it from what's next to it. And part of this here is the cast shadow of this stick that he's holding. So it's darker up here as it's uh, attached to the hand, then it gradually get softer. And I want to push this into the shadow here also. See the bottom here of the upper arm, the part that is foreshortened, you see the very square shape that it has towards, towards the elbow here. This guy that I wonder, I wonder what his what his name is. The artist that did this, but he was a master anatomist. Every every muscle is treated with a, with detail and attention here. See, this part is always. You know, very, very flat. And then as it goes 
closer to the shoulder becomes more round because that's where you have the the, the triceps the bulk of the triceps and he's you see here it gets uh, it goes into the armpit here It has this roundness to it that emphasizes the the top of the triceps. Some of these Russian artists, they, they had this very strict academic training and they were master uh, draftsmen. And some of them ended up becoming like Kandinsky. I don't know if you guys know Kandinsky's work. They became minimalist, but they had this incredible training of hours of shading the human figure and learning anatomy. See, and here's the separation from the tricep and the bicep. Este, este voy a aventar para dibujar. See this right here, making it sharper. That's the bicep. And then what you what you see here, this is the deltoid. I might have gone too dark here in this area. <clears throat> and 
And uh, I want to use the eraser. There's some some highlights here. It's reflected light, so I gotta be careful not to to make it too bright. I think that's more, more like it. See, now I'm just following what I had mapped out previously here. See, this, this is, if, if you work the drawing in this manner, you know, all these steps that we've been doing, blocking it in, the envelope blocking it in, you know, general planes, and then the details just kind of start to fall into place on their own. But now I, I can... Erase some of the highlights. And probably <clears throat> I'll keep working on this. 
I want to add some some white to the tone paper. I don't think I'm gonna even. I don't think I even finish the torso. So I'll probably have this due for homework. It's in this area where there's very light shading. I'm, I'm going to work with uh, the 2B. So I don't over, over model. I'll get, I'll get too dark with that, with the ebony. There's a little bit of a, of a light here. So I like how that looks, looks pretty 3D. So with the remaining time, I'm going to try and do as much of the torso as I 
Right, it just takes time. You know, so like, you can't really crank it out in two hours. If, if you want to do this kind of methodical shading. So I'm going to lower this a little bit here, get closer. So I'm going to go in here. Between the beard and the and the torso, I guess where more where the neck would be. Push that in there. And see, for some reason now, I can notice a little bit of the neck here, which I had never, I had noticed previous. But it's, it's still in, in the shadows. And see, just by darkening around it, I'm gonna bring that out. You can see the ear, I've, I've stayed away from any, any details of the ear, just the shape.
And then there's <coughs> this area here that describes the pectoralis. This is the serratus muscle, which I had previously mapped out. See where these forms, these sharp teeth looking shapes, where they end, they're covered up by the latissimus. It's like a blanket covers up the form, but you still have the, the mass underneath, but you lose the detail. I'm going to soften the edges here. So you hear the, the shadow kind of the shadow of the underarm here kind of blends with the background.
so that I can be more careful here. I'm going to switch back to the to the 2B. See this? This is like, like a triangular form here, or like a cone. But this is the pectoralis. attaching to the humerus here. Sarah, are you going to upload this on YouTube or Blackboard? Yeah, I'll upload it to Panopto. All these highlights that describe the the uh, the sternum and and the ribs, I'm gonna I'm gonna do those with the with a eraser. Right now, I want to get the feeling that that's kind of going away. That the neck is going away from us, and then the arch is coming more towards us. see from here, from the point of the serratus, it attaches to the ribs. So you can do this, these strokes. And as they go further down to the bottom of the rib cage, the value here gets gets darker.
Now, going down here to the this this right here, it's called the external oblique. Um, professor, uh, sorry to bother you, but you still haven't. Uh, you still need to grade the corrections. Oh yes, I. What I'll do is I will comment on them. I think uh, I want to. I'm deciding what to do here, whether to assign this for homework, for you guys to finish it, or if we should uh, finish it together on on Tuesday. And what I'll do in regards to the to the corrections and the assigned homework, I will. I will post a comment. I'll take a look. Ah, okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, we should be putting them on Blogger, right? On Blackboard. We, you should oh. put them on Blogger, but all like, you should also put them, the homework that I assigned should be on uh, on Blackboard. On the group thing, right? Yeah. Okay. On both? Yes. Okay. So what do you guys think we should do? Should we should we continue this together or should or you guys want to finish this for homework? I'm fine continue continuing it in class, but I don't know, know about everyone else. Well why don't you guys put put there on the chat what you would like to do? Just say I want to do this for homework or I want to continue. I think it depends. If we take it for homework, will we still get more homework on top of it? Yes, but something easy. <laughs> then just save it for Monday, I guess. Yeah, if I give you homework, it'll be it won't be like a shaded like a, uh, it'll be like the 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 easier ones that we were doing because I still want you to practice the proportions because it's it's too many days to go without drawing like if you know third you know Friday Saturday Sunday Monday <laughs> yeah a lot of people writing down in class in class let me check in class seems in class is winning 
We have to do this democratically. <laughs> Make sure I count the votes correctly. I wanna... <laughs> People are saying in class. What's that? So far, people in the chat are saying in class. Yeah, it does. I think, uh, I think only one person. I think only one person said homework. Yeah, you know, Brenda said homework. Um, but yeah, uh, for homework. This, this guy. Um, Just, I can check for understanding, see if you guys understand what happens to the proportions when someone is reclining. Mm -hmm. Just that one, sir, for homework? Yeah. But you gotta get it right. <laughs> no shading, I was just, just I wanna make sure that you know what to do here. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, on Tuesday. But it's a, these are pretty simple. Just one of these. Do we need to do the, the, the ruler thing on the paper for that one? Like the two inch? You have to, you've got to show me that you understand what happens to the proportions when the figure is reclining. I'll, um, post, I'll post the announcement on, uh, on Blackboard. I sent you guys the, this picture through email because I need to get an update to Blackboard where I couldn't figure out how to upload images, but now I contacted the person that that works on uh, on Blackboard and they explained it to me. Uh, mm -hmm. But hey, don't help each other out. You have to figure out how to do the proportions. I hope someone's already like trying to. <laughs> I mean, that's a good, that's a good, that's a good uh, cheat code. <laughs> don't, don't listen to that person. <laughs> wow, sir. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm out of it with the shading. It's, it's a lot of fun, but it takes a lot of concentration. I, I'm, I'm really liking it. I'm enjoying it. I hope you're enjoying it as, as half as much as I am. <laughs> but. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah. Also, uh, John, I, I had a, John, are you there? Yeah. I I got, there's a, Car Carlos Lima, he's the photographer for the unit. I just found this out. He came over, he photographed the skeletons. So. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so he, that's his job. He, he told me he's like supposed to photograph the, uh, you know, uh, hard work for the department. So he came over and he photographed it. Uh, that's the one, like, you don't have to worry about, you know, coming over and helping me out. Like, so it's already done. But yeah, thank you anyway. Uh, Not a worry. Okay. Uh, Should we take the progress picture for the homework too or no? Yes. Okay. Okay, Thanks, guys. Sir. Can you go over the homework again? I'll, I'll post the announcement on on Blackboard. I, I figured out how to post the pictures again. But it'll be this this figure. Okay. And you have to figure out what to do with the proportions so that it comes out looking accurate. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's gonna get Thank you, sir. it's gonna get posted in the Blackboard folder, right? Are you gonna set up a new one or we, where do we put it? The homework? Yeah. This one that I, this will be a new folder, yeah. For this, will, it'll be a new folder. And this one that we just did today? That, you don't have to post it until Tuesday, until we're done with it. Okay. Yeah. So are we going to continue this one on Tuesday? Yeah, it, it seems. Uh, <laughs> It is. Uh, it's unanimous. It seems it's all in class. Everybody's in class, in class. It's a couple to. No, it's only one person has homework. It's a double-edged sword with his class. It's, I'm giving you a, a very <laughs> simple drawing for homework. It's too many days to go without drawing. I can't go a day without drawing. See, sir. 
<laughs> okay, guys, I will let you go and uh, I'll see you next week. Bye, sir. Thank you. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Thank you. Hasta luego.